Hi all, Andre Pavichuk here, and first of all, before I even begin with the course, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all the people that have subscribed to my channel. Thank you to all the times uh, people have commented on my LinkedIn and liked and celebrated, because I'm really happy with the feedback I got for my advertisement video, which is really great to have. Right, um, without further ado, this is the CAF Terraform uh, course, so let's get to it. We're going to build the Cloud Adoption Framework with Terraform. So, first of all, a little bit about me. I have, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trader. I have uh, seven Microsoft certifications, and I'm also Terraform Certified as well. I've uh, got a passion for learning, as you can see with these, but I prefer the hands-on approach. So for me, most of these I have done in terms of hands-on learning. I've also deployed several CAF implementations. So there are a few different CAF uh, Terraform variations, and I'm going to stick with one. Uh, I've released exam tips videos as well, so please check out my YouTube uh, if you want some further tips on how to prepare for these exams. Right, so before we get into the course, there's a several ways you can reach me if you like what you've seen on the content or you want to just respond with some feedback or anything like that. Um, so you can connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message, I always make a conscientious effort to try and get back to you as much as I can. Uh, you can comment on my YouTube and you can uh, pop into my new Discord server, which I called IT Workspace, which is meant for like a community to work together, basically. So we're going to solve with CAF Terraform, but we'll see where it, the journey takes us. And of course, subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on all the content. So agenda. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the technologies that this course will cover. I'm going to talk about why I'm doing this course. I'm going to talk about what is CAF Terraform with an actual quick demo. Uh, I'm going to talk about the audience, who, sh who should start this course, basically. And I'm going to talk about the format of the course and what's going to be coming down a few weeks down the line. So first of all, I want to say... What technologies will we cover? We're going to cover the lot. Basically, it's going to be from the very beginning to actually setting up an environment in your own tenant. You know, so you could actually go, oh, yeah, I'm using CAF Terraform. And, you know, you, all you need is a computer, really, and uh, add an internet connection. You will need a credit card to get subscription and tenant code. But other than that, you you should be good to go. Now, I first of all want to cover a quick one about why Terraform and not ARM or Bison. Now, really, you can use all to deploy what you need, all Azure resources. But I think I feel Terraform is better because it allows better control of your resources. It allows state files, which, uh, you know, uh, see your environment and you can control what exactly is going to be deployed. It's you've got a centralized repository for it. Uh, it allows general principles to get lit up more effectively. So, for example, what I mean by this is you may have a company uh, which uh, has its own Terraform code. So, for example, uh, Databricks. Databricks is a company which has its own Terraform code. And what you use as your infrastructure provider, like AWS, Azure, GCP, they're on a top level. But then you will have uh, your Databricks on the bottom level. So whichever one is used, you know, you might as well just use Terraform, which can link them up together rather than, you know, have them separate. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it allows for the multi-cloud integration and it it's a third party rather than ARM or Bicep. It's a third party which keeps Microsoft honest. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket, huh? Right, so why am I doing this? A year ago, I started off uh, learning with a company. I was like, 
<sighs> okay, let's deploy Calf Terraform for uh, for a company. And we were like, okay, let's get started. And at that point, there was no meaningful documentation. I've tried <laughs> a few different things uh, to get that working. And we eventually got that working for the clients. And uh, they've been very happy with that. But the things I really tried, I've tried to record the whole course. I've tried recording it like awfully I've still got the video somewhere like setting it up but you know what I'd rather release this week by week to make sure that I'm actually giving a service to the community to make sure that you guys are actually understanding what I'm putting it out so that's why I decided the platform YouTube for me would be the best bet so therefore when I release a week one uh Based on the feedback I get for week one, uh, I could interpret it into my week two, week three, week four, and carries on. So therefore, it's building a good, good content. So I will learn from all the feedback, and I will try and make things better all the time. Uh, so yeah, this is, <laughs> brings us to now. This is week one. I'm really happy to get started with it. And But the, my main goal, why I'm doing this is first of all, I want to make sure that uh, there's good documentation behind it that we, we deploy and people can see that, you know, hands-on approach and seeing how it's actually deployed rather than talking about it in theory. But, and I also want to raise awareness because uh, this project is, um, it's run by Microsoft and it's a project which allows for modules of Terraform to be there. Now, for me, I, um, I've i been looking forward for this for Microsoft for a lot, lot of time because for me, when I first started, uh, I was like learning PowerShell and I was like thinking, okay, surely there must have been somebody that has written all these modules and I can just adopt. But then, no, I had to learn from scratch and do it, do it, do it. But with, with this project for Terraform, they actually supply you all the modules. So all you need to do is plug in the configuration files. Don't get me wrong, it's not as simple as I make it sound. It's a little bit complicated, but it's fine, we will get there. Now, first of all, before I start off, I wanna cover what is CAF. Now, CAF is the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework for Azure. It's a guidance that's designed to help you create and implement business and technology strategies for the cloud. It provides best practice, documentation tools, cloud architects, IT professionals, business decision makers use this information to achieve their cloud adoption goals. So essentially it's, it's a framework, it's best practice. It helps you understand exactly what, um, you know, how to actually manage your infrastructure, how to manage your, com uh, your company, how to manage cost. All of that is covered by CAF. Now, I've left a link which covers uh, the use Seraphim to build your landing zones. Uh, but again, I will share this uh, PowerPoint slide and I will share some links as well so you can guys can actually see and go through it in your own time. So my next uh, section will be um, is what is an Azure landing zone. Now, this is quite a mouthful, so I'm going to try and uh, explain it in my own words. A landing zone is basically a section of uh, the cloud that you have, which is isolated in a way which is for a certain project. That's how I best see it. Uh, this is quite a mouthful, so you guys can have a read through it yourself as you want. Um, there's a link over there to a la Azure landing zone as well. I always find it is best to actually show you guys as a picture is worth a thousand words, really. Um, so if you <laughs> if you guys can see over here, like. It says landings on subscription, but you can have multiple. So say, for example, you have you have a core. So your core would be uh, connectivity identity management. Uh, you might have sandbox for, uh, either for yourself or for, the, for each landing zone. However you want to deploy this, you also will have um, your DevOps team, which the DevOps team essentially 
should be deploying all of this if you are adopting the cloud adoption framework with Terraform strategy. So your I'm not sure about this one because with the CAF Terraform um, section, I would rather put this up up to here because this is going to be the whole encompass and you would use uh, platform DevOps to actually deploy your management group structure. You would actually use it for to deploy identity management and uh, connectivity subscriptions or the resources within it you would use Seraphon for. So, um, but yeah, this is what our crux of our work is going to be. And working on this, we will eventually deploy management groups, we'll deploy policies, we'll deploy uh, key votes, we'll deploy uh, log analytics, we'll deploy um, firewalls, virtual networks. I'm looking forward to deploy all that. But first of all, before we get into it, we need to understand exactly what a landed zone is. So a landed zone could be here. So say for example, you have a financial application that uh, is being configured and worked on uh, continuously. Now that could be your landed zone subscription. So that financial application is your pure landing zone and you completely work on that and it's isolated from everything else. That's the whole purpose to make sure that that is separate from every other project or section that you may have in your environment. That's the whole concept of it. So that's what we're looking for um, when we talk about enterprise CAF and uh, we're talking about landing zones. This is kind of the section that you have of it. So um, again, if you're not sure, have a look through the uh, link and there's plenty of um, uh, YouTube videos I can refer you to. I don't want to be spending too much on it because to be honest, there's so much content out there already that I actually just want to get hands on with it. So yeah, we will get, we'll push on and hopefully you guys understand. If you're not sure, feel free to message me and I'll try and explain it a bit more to you. So, why adopt CAF with Terraform? So, it, it allows AI to see more control of the, the environment. So, I mentioned before about state files. What state files are is just a snapshot, basically, in Terraform. Once Terraform configures everything, it saves to a state file. And in that state file, you have more control of what's change on what's going on with your environment. So that is why I like the whole structure and that you have remote. So you, you're not limited to a developer working on a desktop on their computer and then another developer. So if something happens with that computer, you, yeah, you, you don't know you're going to be in trouble. That, that's not how it works. We're going to do the whole remote stay file, which is definitely the better approach. Um, it's easy to deploy to the next environment. So as I mentioned about the ladder source, for like, for example, for the financial application, if the financial application has been secured well and you're happy with it, then you can just borrow that code, change the name, change... um some other names and uh, connections and you have a, almost an exact copy of that. In order for you to actually deploy it again, you might have to resort to ARM templates or anything like that. But if you just you deploy it with Terraform, all you need to do is copy the code, run it in the next pipeline and you should be fine. And it applies, the last thing is, it adopts this standard set by Microsoft. This is a Microsoft project. It's not some communi random community-led project. It's a Microsoft-led community project, which is a big difference. So, hopefully that kind of explained it. So, CAF Terraform is basically a concept where you would use Terraform to deploy your cloud adoption framework environment. And again, as I've mentioned, it's an open source project by its own by Microsoft. It has a set of Terraform landing zones, a set of Terraform modules, a Terraform CAF provider, and a deployment of an open source state management. 
I will cover all of that later on. Um, this is an intro. I don't want to get too deep into each section right now. We will go hands on with it. And as I go hands on with the whole project, I will explain along the way. I want to get us hands on rather than trying to explain so much the theory. So I'm going to, this is probably the most theory that I will do in this, in this uh, first and second video. But after that, it will be hands on, but it will be covered with an explanation afterwards. So let's have a quick look at the demo. Now, th what I'm going to be showing you guys here is the is the cloud adoption framework for landing zones for Terraform. So if you guys clicked on that link, you guys can see that there is some documentation and this is documentation which I didn't have before, like when I was configuring it like a year ago. There was not really that much documentation on it, but now they look like they are working on it, and which is which is really great to see. Um, there's a YouTube video of Arnaud Leroux, who's um, who's one of the chief operators of this project, and he um, he speaks with Sarah Lind about this whole um, kind of uh, calf terraform. So I would suggest you guys maybe have a look through, have a look through the information stored here and have a look through um, what is there. Again, I will leave the link for you guys, but really it's just, it's just one of those that I really think that Cloud Adoption Framework for La Terraform Landed Zones is definitely one of the best projects to be working on right now. Um, and essentially so this is what it says it's uh it, it's a project which has all the terraform modules um and yeah it it leverages battlefield tested artifacts so what it means by that is these modules have already been used in businesses they're not like some project which hasn't it already has been used and it's been quite successful so therefore this this works and it's community driven, but it's owned by Microsoft. So you get the best of both worlds. Now we are going to look through um, the fundamentals. So we're going to go through the levels of hierarchy. So essentially you guys saw that you have a separation of like landing zones and subscriptions. But you guys saw that little section of platform DevOps, right? Um, but there's not enough detail in that diagram to do it justice. Essentially, CAF Terraform operates on a level approach. CAF Terraform has a level zero, a one, two, three, a four approach, and you can have as many levels as you like, but it starts you off from zero to four. Okay, level zero, uh, now if, the, if you want to think of it like a higher building, so level zero is your entry point. And then it goes up all the way to the top where you might have some sort of application or something else. And yeah, that's how it kind of rises. I prefer the other way where it's like a nuclear bunker or underneath where it's like level zero is like your ground and then level one and then you go through the perimeters to get there. So essentially what you have for level zero is your launchpad. It's the thing which makes your DevOps work. You've got like key vault, manage identities, uh, storage accounts to store your state files. That is what level zero deploys. Now with a state file, whenever you deploy resources in Terraform, it is going to store it in a state file. And the great thing I like about this is that this level approach is that when you configure your level zero and then you configure your level one, your level one state file speaks of your level zero. I'll get to it in a second, but I just want to show you guys what it is right now. So as you guys can see, it controls your blast radius, it enforces standard configuration and enables autonomy. And of course, 
has least privileged principles. So if you guys have a look at this levels approach, you guys can see that it starts off with level zero as a TF state, but then it communicates with your level one. And that way you have a re you have an agent which is responsible for your level one, but it has read write to level one. However, it also has read to your level zero TFC, but it doesn't have the write. So it can't write to level zero. So level zero is your high, like this, that is like, yeah, your top level. Basically, um, if you, you don't want to destroy that uh, uh, because it might destroy all the other levels, you don't, this is where level zero is like your launch pad. So it gets you started. Level one, you're looking at things like, for example, policy or creating management groups. Those are the things you would have level one. You would also configure your agents on level one. You would configure yeah, your, so all of these agents that you guys see, the EBSI, um, that's your level one. Now, before when I did it, um, I used virtual machines as self-hosted agents. However, something new has come to my attention, which I'm going to deploy with you guys on this, and I can't wait to get started with it, but it's basically using Kubernetes, because Rover is a container, right? So you use Kubernetes manager identity with Rover as your agents, and so on virtual machines. I, I've been happy to, <laughs> to say that because um, I, I'm not a big fan of having virtual machines, so that's why I'm looking forward to that. But that's your kind of level approach. Okay, your level approach is that you have pipelines which execute at certain levels. And this pipeline, for example, might uh, execute at level two. So for example, you might have a pipeline dedicated to uh, a certain ver to, to your virtual network as we saw with connectivity for your hub model. Or we can have a pipeline for your Azure firewall. But they're all executed at the level two level. And then it might read to your level one level, which are your policies. And that's how it all works. So essentially, if you go to level four, level four might be your, um, let's just say your web application. Okay. Your level three might have your app service plan, which supports the web application. Your level two, if you have chosen to go into private endpoints, for example, you can actually look at level two to work with that. Maybe you can put in your load balancer at level two for that web application. And again, level one will control the policies and your uh, your overall governance of the of that web application. So. As you guys can see, the core principles are one level can host multiple safe files. So as I've talked about before, you could have a firewall, Azure firewall, virtual network, and all of that can be hosted by multiple safe files. Rover helps you locate the right storage account. I will speak about Rover in a bit, but essentially it just, um, it's a tool used to help run it. But I, I will cover that uh, over here. <laughs> um, right, so you can only write in your current level. So, as, uh, yeah, as you can see, it can actually write on the, uh, the current level, yeah? And it's, again, it reads one level down. So, your, so this will read to this, and then uh, you have to execute this to write to the, to read to this. So, that's kind of like how you can have, um, have to from to be run and then codeless state reading reading and enterprise composition so essentially it allows you to lo load any landing zones in memory and compose from it so again that's just a general view of saying that it um it helps you uh, create like a module and run your landing zone from it. 
Okay, so that's how basically the levels hierarchy works. Hopefully that makes sense. Have a read through it. If it doesn't fully make sense, let me know. So you have compute nodes again. So this is what you're going to have to run your to be running your agents. Now, as I've mentioned before, you have Azure Virtual Machines, which could be your self-hosted agents, or your Azure Kubernetes services. Now, I haven't deployed Azure Kubernetes services before, but we're going to do that as part of this course. I am all for getting rid of Azure Virtual Machines in whatever capacity I can. So let's just do it. And of course, it talks about authentication authorization, which uh, is about using Azure ma managed identities, which is part of the Kubernetes, which we will use. So in here, it's like, it's just saying that to deliver a complete environment for any software project, they want to avoid, um, you know, s certain uh, generic, configuration with Terraform it you can read it says files output and then it's just gonna say basically what it's saying here is that you will have certain global settings so for example what, what it means by global settings is if I configured something at level zero that is gonna be applied all the way down to my levels so for example if I created a prefix at level zero that is gonna transcend to all my level one, all my level two, and all my level three. So essentially, if I wrote uh, Andre at the beginning of um, the whole uh, configurations, that's what I would have no matter what resource I would deploy, which is absolutely great because <laughs> that way it can help um, if you are looking for a template which is just kind of generic, then you can actually um, you know, avoid all the uh, global uh, name restrictions. For example, Key Vault cannot be the same globally in Azure. Storage account cannot be the same globally in Azure. But if you add a prefix, you can actually uh, get away, get around that. But that's what the global settings do. Uh, the global settings mean that everything transcends down. So it's kind of great that you can actually put in some configuration at level zero and get it applied to apply everywhere. And finally, what is Launchpad? So again, it's gonna call, call about level zero, landing zone uh, is a foundation of account and it's responsible for defining how to sort retrieve the Terraform state. So again, would there will be multiple Terraform states per different files, okay? So you're gonna have uh, per different levels, you will have multiple state uh, Terraform states. So uh, again, a uh, reminder, Terraform state is basically a capture of your environment once Terraform has run. Uh, finding the core secrets protection for the Terraform state, which we're gonna use in conjunction of pipelines, secrets, and in your Azure Key Vault. We're gonna define the management of the principles or identities. Again, we're gonna use manage identities to deploy, um, to deploy to the environment and define how to access partition the different subscriptions. Again, it, it gives that good separation um, between uh, different uh, subscriptions and how to actually connect to each different um, layer, if you will. And again, DevOps foundations, what will your DevOps foundations look like? Like, for example, repositories, uh, your um, pipelines, how many levels of uh, pipelines you will have, all that Launchpad helps with. So this is quite a bit right now, and I'm gonna cover Rover for now, I think. Module and provider, essentially, as I think of module, I'm not going to go too much into it, but think of module as a template. So a module in Terraform is a template, which uh, like if you have worked with ARM before, you can have a parameters file and the, and the actual template, right? So this is a, kind of the same way. So your 
this module is a template and your configuration files which are your TFRs will be your um, parameters okay in ARM world uh, so let's see provider we are gonna we're gonna cover Terraform providers later on I'm not really gonna um, confuse you guys too much with it but the one thing I really wanted to cover as well in this introduction uh, video because we as I say don't worry if it gets a little bit too much for you because it is a little bit complicated but once you get it you really start to find value in it so what is CAF Rover? CAF Rover is basically it's a container which contains all your kind of Microsoft's best tools in that container so it helps deploy Terraform on Microsoft Azure and it actually is uh, has for example uh, integrations with Visual Studio Code so you can use Visual Studio Code to run the Rover container which we will do that later on um, and it, it helps because it has the latest Microsoft standards and all you have to do is you have to specify a version of Rover that you want to run but you don't actually have to worry about what's inside of it because that's what uh, Rover is made for to actually deploy the tools so you don't have to install them yourself uh, just some reasons why it's best to use CAF Rover it greatly simplifies secure state management on Azure storage accounts. It helps test in different versions of binaries. Um, it's yeah, it's just basically it's an easier form rather than you trying to configure everything yourself. But for me, the best one, the best thing about Rover is that it helps you differentiate between what's going to be your module. And what's going to be your configuration file? So it will have one path for your um, for your TFRs files for your variables, and another path which is going to be your modules. Now the modules are already supplied, so all you have to do is you have to create the configuration path, and then go from there. Um. There's quite a few things else, but we will have a full video on Rover later on. I just wanted to shoot out this kind of um, start of a demo. So we will um, carry on now with the whole uh, demo and we'll, ca we'll carry on now, okay? So the hopefully that gives you an insight of what we will be working on. It's it's uh, a lot it's a new concept and that's why um generally this course is kind of designed for people who may have taken and achieved as an architect expert and devops expert um in the other in the cloud adoption framework it does say that it's just azure architect expert track but honestly feel devops engineer expert is also there as well but you don't have to have that as I said, I'm going to from it from the beginning, I'm going to ramp up. So essentially, I'm going to start from the very basic, but and we will ta be taking a hands on approach. And that's why I'm doing this YouTube course to be that interactive model to, to you know, to, to scale back if it's getting too compl complicated for you guys or to move it forward if it's going at a slow pace that's why i'm launching it this way um and i as i say this is real world but i will start from the very beginning i will start from you know i haven't even if i if i show you guys here um i haven't even installed visual studio code on this computer this is from a desktop shortcut but I have not installed anything yet. This is a new computer that I have. So don't worry. We're all going to do this together. So. If I now go into uh, 
how do you fit in there will be constant feedback on the course and for those that want to take learning further and do this interactive course so essentially this is a plan of action this is what we're gonna do um, I'm hoping that you guys are okay with this and I will try and explore all this but I want a hands-on approach in my videos I don't want to be going too much theory. I know it's a lot to take in, but I recommend you guys um, have a look through the links I send you. Have a read through every single section and trying to understand it. Uh, and if you want to know more, qu if you, please let me know. Um, maybe I might shoot out one more video with the common questions in between week one and week two, but let me know if it is. Um, so week two, I'm looking to do the culture and ways of learning. So for me, it's not about just, um, you know, doing this hands on and you following. I also um, think it's about the way you can uh, interact and you can learn together. So I'm going to cover the culture a bit in week two about actually working with Terraform and creating these real world projects and week three we will solve simple we're gonna create a set up the tenant and the subscription that's all we're gonna do then week four we're gonna start to wrap this up we're gonna set up repos we're gonna set up devops and we're gonna set up visual studio code week five we're gonna explore rover how to actually run rover in visual studio code and how to create your launchpad framework Week six, we're going to ramp up even more. We're going to go with pipelines, Rover, and AKS. And then week seven, we're going to actually work with the CAF Terraform modules and then deploy a couple of, uh, hopefully, resources. And we should be all good. Um, and then after that, I'm happy to work with many, co with many applications and whatever we want to deploy. I'm looking forward to doing that. So... This is my plan of action, so hopefully you guys are all right with it, and we will go from there. So, I just want to also talk about format of the course. The format of the course will be a weekly release of about video between 14 to 18 minutes with explanation and demo. There may be times when I'll release six or seven minute videos if I feel I don't need to either drag out a topic, or I might add on some additional videos provided on the feedback from the course and as i say the videos are not so and so on and can be changed depending on feedback there is no end date i always encourage you keep on learning and this is what i really want to work with and so this is why i'm kind of releasing this course to raise this awareness to the community as i say feedback is important so please let me know how it's going for you um Raising awareness, as I mentioned before, and I mentioned work with your buddy. That I'm going to talk about in week two. So, how to give feedback. Send feedback a couple of ways. Send through forms. My metrics that matter. Comment on YouTube. Leave feedback in a feedback channel or direct message on Discord. I'll cover these later on. Uh, some of them I won't have set up yet, but I will. And again, these are the ways to reach me. And I hope you enjoyed this course so far. You enjoyed the intro. Hopefully your head hasn't exploded from it. Um, thank you for offering. And please don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.